Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And today I've got a question for you. What do you think about when you hear the term bass trap? Is it this? Or whatever this is? Or maybe this? Or this? Or maybe this? or this, or maybe this, because they come in all different shapes and sizes and densities and thicknesses. It's super confusing. What is a bass trap when it comes down to it? So that's what I want to break down for you today so you understand what you're actually dealing with when you're looking at bass traps and why it's such a confusing name, why it's quite misleading, in fact, and what the one thing is that you really need to pay attention to when you're looking for bass traps. So looking at all these designs, they have one thing in common, and that is that they're made from some sort of porous material, right? So either some sort of acoustic foam or usually insulation material. And that's really what people mean when they talk about bass traps. It's some sort of porous broadband absorber that is deep enough to also absorb some low frequencies, right? And that's where the problem is. It's, it's really loosely defined. There is no clear definition of what a bass trap actually is. Like how deep does it actually need to be to become a bass trap? Or what shape does it have to be to be a bass trap? It seems like anybody can put some sort of acoustic panel out on the market and just call it a bass trap. So just as an example, let's look at this particular one here. Seems like a standard square absorber panel. It's called a bass trap uh, and it's four inches deep, okay? And here is what the absorption coefficient for such a panel looks like when you put, up, put it right up against the wall. I'm again using the porous absorber calculator, which you've seen me use before. It's a, a really simple tool to quickly model different types of porous absorbers. And what I've got here is a 100 centimeter, sorry, 100 millimeter deep absorber, which is about four inches with a flow resistivity of 10,000 Pascal seconds per meter squared, which is somewhere in the ballpark of just standard acoustic foam. And I've put it right up against the wall so there's no air gap behind it, right? And what this graph now shows us is the effectiveness in percent, basically, of how well a cer uh, the, this panel absorbs sound at a certain frequency, right? So at the bottom, we've got our frequency spectrum, our audible spectrum going from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And then we've got our vertical axis, which is basically in percent or shown here from zero to one of how well a particular frequency absorbs sound. And what we see here for this panel is that starting from the top, we've basically got almost 100% absorption, but then it gradually drops off, right? And bass isn't clearly defined in terms of frequencies, but let's just say it's below 100 hertz, right? And what we can see here is that this panel, if you put it right up against the wall, is maybe 30% effective at 100 hertz and then it quickly drops off below that, right? So this panel is called and sold as a bass trap, but if you put it on the wall, it doesn't really absorb any bass. It absorbs a tiny amount of bass, but it absorbs the rest of the spectrum much better. It's basically a broadband trap, a broadband absorber that absorbs some bass. And that's really critical for all these porous absorbers. Now, of course, we can put this panel across a corner, for example, and that's what I've simulated here. And we can see by just adding an extra air gap behind it, we actually increase the low frequency absorption from this panel, right? And now our 30% mark has dropped down to about 40 hertz right here, okay? And this is really what I want you to take away from this very simple example is that what matters for these porous absorbers is the depth more than anything, the total depth from wall all the way to the front of the panel. Some part of that 
can be air, as long as the front part of it is actually absorption material. It doesn't really matter what shape this particular trap has, this absorber has. It doesn't matter all that much what density, density it has either. The density is literally there to, uh, to make the panel as efficient as possible at the depth that we're, uh, we're using it at. So again, all in all, we could say that these panels are broadband traps that also absorb some base. And that's why it's such a misleading name to call these panels base traps, because ultimately they're, if anything, mid and high frequency absorbers that also absorb some base if you make them deep enough. Yeah? Um, it's not to be confused with resonance absorbers like Helmholtz resonators or slotted panels or perforated panels or diaphragmatic absorbers, membrane traps. Those are all tuned absorbers that we can tune specifically to only work in the low frequencies. But interestingly enough, those aren't usually called base traps, although they are in effect actually base traps. That's why this is such a, a misleading name. It's such a confusing term to use for these panels because they, the, these porous absorbers aren't actually specifically base traps. They are broadband traps that also absorb some base if you make them deep enough. But so as you can see here, you can, you can make them effective in the low end beyond the mids and highs with the, the appropriate depth. And just as an example, here is what a six inch deep absorber panel looks like in the blue curve if we put it flat across, uh, on, onto the wall without an air gap. And then if we put it across a corner, that's the green line, and we have the same size air gap as with the previous example. But so again, the only difference between these two panels is that one of them is right up on the wall and the other one is across a corner. Right? The only difference is the total depth from the front of the absorber material to the back wall, where the sound basically reflects and passes back through the panel. Okay? And this is what really matters with these porous absorbers. It's the, the total depth of the panel. And what I want you to notice here is how flexible that makes these types of base traps, right? It doesn't matter whether you're trying to uh, reduce peaks and dips in the frequency response caused by standing waves or room modes, or whether you put them on uh, reflection duty, absorbing reflections on the side walls or on the ceiling or wherever. You can use the same panel for every job in your studio. And because it works broadband, including the base if you use it right, it's a, a really effective, good bang for your buck panel for small rooms where you have limited space and you really got to get everything out of a single package of acoustics tool, right? The panel needs to be flexible and enough to do its job no, no matter where you put it. And, and that needs to be able to deal with all the problems across the spectrum not just the low end. And that's what makes them so 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 great for small rooms. Um, if you're interested, I've got a whole other video uh, on that uh, topic, why it's the right strategy uh, for, for small rooms, so you can check that out. But right now, I want you to take away two things here. The first one is, if you're searching for bass traps and you're confused by all the different designs and shapes and densities and thicknesses out there and the descriptions of how they work, uh, it's okay to be confused because it's a very confusing, very broadly used misleading term, right? But in general, when people talk about bass traps, what they're actually talking about is broadband absorbers made from some sort of porous material so that it works across the spectrum, broadband, and on top of that, that it's deep enough to actually absorb low end. How deep? That's a matter of uh, definition, I guess, because ultimately it's more about how you use the panel, or it's at, at least as much about how you use the panel than its actual thickness, right? But ultimately that's the one thing you need to be looking for when you're searching for a base trap, aka a broadband porous absorber, 
is that the depth is there. Unless the depth is there, it's not actually going to absorb e any base, even though it's called a base trap, just like in this example with the four inch absorber, right? You can sort of get it to work in the low end to some extent if you put it across a corner. But in fact, what you start seeing is also this little ripple effect in the mids here. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that right now, but basically because the panel is too thin, the material core is too thin in relation to the air gap behind it, we actually start seeing a, uh, a drop in effectiveness in the mid frequencies. And that's something we wanna avoid, right? So that's why slightly deeper uh, than, uh, or a deeper panel than four inches definitely makes sense uh, in any scenario because it just gives a smoother absorption coefficient, a smoother absorption co uh, characteristic. And it also just works lower down in the frequency spectrum because the total depth is larger. Now, if you're on the hunt for a, a base trap for your room or base, tra base traps for your room, before you buy or build anything, I really want you to download my complete guide to base traps and base tra trapping, which you can find at the link in the description. It's basically like a, a reference guide to like all the different designs of base traps and base absorption panels out there that you can use to figure out how these different designs work and what the right solution for your room is. So there are obviously porous absorbers in there, but also uh, tube traps and uh, Helmholtz resonators and slotted panels and perforated panels and membrane traps and diaphragmatic traps. It's all in there and it's really nicely and easily laid out for you to figure out how to actually uh, use these panels if you get them, how to even figure out when you're looking at a certain panel online, what type it actually is and how it works, how you should use it in your room. So uh, how many you need to get and uh, where you would want to place these panels. So again, before you head out and actually put your uh, hard earned cash into some sort of product that you're gonna buy online, make sure you download the complete guide to base traps and base trapping from the link below. But that's it for now. I hope that clarified why base traps are so confusing and what it is you're actually looking at. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.